Dear family and friends in Christ Jesus, may Christ Jesus be your firm foundation now and always. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for sending us your dear Son, Christ Jesus, and we pray that each day that we would build on that firm foundation of faith that you laid by your Holy Spirit in our baptisms. We pray that each day we would reinforce that faith with your word, that we would not be led away by those who, uh, by the devil and by our evil temptations. Lord, we pray that each day we would turn to you, knowing your forgiveness and your grace. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in the past three years, it has been kind of impressive and different to watch as Jacob has grown, as he's developed. And I'm I'm sure as you've watched your own children, as you've watched your own grandchildren grow and develop, you've probably noticed some of the changes that go on. Not just the changes, I mean, of independence or the change that they learn, uh, new words, things like that, but the way that they learn things in general, the way that they learn how to deal with situations, the le- way they learn how to problem solve. Jacob and I, we oftentimes will, when we have time, we'll, we'll play with blocks. And maybe you remember from when you were little or when your kids were little, Duplo blocks, they were about that big, uh, uh, pretty small. Well, we don't play with those blocks. We, he's still a little young for those. We play with blocks that are about this big. And, they're, and they won't even, he won't choke on them. They won't even go in his mouth. Uh, but, you know, when we first started playing with those blocks, I noticed that he would oftentimes, he'd love to build things tall, but then he'd like to knock it over. And he would laugh and laugh as soon as he knocked it over. But the more as, we've gone, as time has gone on, the more we've played blocks together, the more I've been able to teach him. And he's not only learned by what I've, to- by what I've done, but by what I've said to him. Instead of now wanting to knock every towel over that we build, he wants it to get higher and higher. It's not a big surprise that the people of Babel were doing the same thing, right? It's, them things don't change. But for, as we build it taller, now he fusses when it gets knocked over because we do try to reinforce it. We try to build up the bottom so it'll be strong on top. And I can't help but think about Paul saying very much the same thing. How important it is to reinforce the bottom that we continue to build. How important he sa- it was for him to point out that we don't build on just anything, but we build on the firm foundation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he even said that he didn't expect the people to just learn this on their own. He didn't expect them to just have osmosis and, or observation and pick it up, but he had to teach them. Listen again to verse 10, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10. Like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. Paul didn't expect the people just to guess and figure it out. He had to teach them. And as you know, as you've raised your children, maybe even grandchildren, you have to teach them. You can't just expect them to learn by watching. There's sure a lot of things they learn by watching. But then, what do they learn by watching? What do your kids learn by just watching? If you're not constantly giving them the message of salvation, if you're not constantly reinforcing the truth that is out there, what are they seeing in the world? What is going on in your house, in your community, on television, on the internet? What are they learning by what they're watching? No, if we want to teach our children, teach the next generation, we are the ones who need to reinforce that foundation that was laid at their baptism. That the Holy Spirit laid when before they could even speak, before they could even build a bit with a building block, the work that he was already doing on their hearts. The problem is, is so often even in our own lives, though, we kind of just let our building projects go, don't we? We kind of just let things go from day to day. We kind of just, well, we'll get along here. We'll get along there. Church is fine on Sunday, and maybe I'll make it this week. Maybe I won't. And little things start to creep in. And as you maybe well know, if you just let little things go in a building, how fast they decay and erode the building. And how true that is of our faith as well. When we just let little things slip here and slip in here and little things slip in there, they may not seem like a lot. But over time, those things start to cause cracks. They start to cause breaks and separation. Maybe it starts out as, well, I'm not going to talk to that person anymore because they were mean to me. Maybe it's, Maybe it is just, I'm going to watch this program on TV because, well, I don't usually indulge in this type of entertainment, but maybe today. Maybe it's, maybe it's that I'm traveling. This Sunday I'll miss church. I'll, I'll get, it up, get back to it next week. Maybe it's your prayer life. Well, God, you know I'm busy, 
So just, we'll talk right now on the way to church, and then we'll hear from you next week too. And it starts out as small things like that, doesn't it? Small little cracks that start to firm, to start to form because we don't address them. We, talk, we think about it and we, we make these promises to ourselves, maybe even promises to God. Well, we'll catch up with it later. But we let those things go. And the longer we let those go, the more out of control they become. And this is the way the devil works. The devil doesn't just use dynamite to blast the temple of the Holy Spirit in one fell swoop. We'd catch it. We'd see it right away if he tried something big like that. But he works in these small ways. A little crack here in the brick there. A little splinter in the wood here. A little break there. He starts to replace those good materials we build with. God's word. A faithful prayer life. He starts to replace those with with cheap building products. With things that don't hold up over time. Things that won't hold up to the pressures of this life. He starts to replace it with things like alcohol. Things that, that will pass away quickly. Things like work we continue to pour our time into, but never is there a return. And what about you? What types of things are you building with right now? Are you building with those firm found, with that firm foundation? Are you reinforcing that firm foundation that was laid by Christ our Lord? Or are there other things? Cheaper materials that are, seem like they're easier to get, so you put them in there. Cheaper materials that seem to last for at least a while, but then start to crumble. Those things, they, they, they really don't last, do they? They really don't hold up over time. Our faith walk with God, it can't just be a Sunday morning thing. We get a good message, good meal on Sunday through God's Word, through Holy Communion. And then the rest of the week, we go about our lives as if we're something else. Because when we do that, when we do that, we erode our faith. We erode that foundation which is laid when we replace those good things in our lives with unkept promises to God, with things that break so easily. Just like a tower that's built too light on the bottom, it will fall. We will fall. And the truth is, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Because when your foundation is not firmly in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you're not constantly reinforcing it by the work of the Holy Spirit, then that foundation will crack and crumble and will fall. And that's why we need to keep going back to that foundation we have. That foundation that did not come in stone or in metal, but that foundation that was laid at the foot of the cross. Not even wood was that foundation, but flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because at that foundation, he, he gave himself for us. He gave his life as our Savior gave his life for our sins. And he took that foundation that we laid. You know, so often we, we look at this and we say, oh, that's a beautiful event at the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that for me. But when Jesus did that, it was not just a beautiful event. It was a painful and an awful event. It was an event that caused him sheer suffering and even his death for us so that we would not have to. And that is the foundation that we lay. Jesus ripped up that foundation of our crumbling, sinful hearts. He ripped it up just like we're going to have to rip up the foundation out here so that we can put the new ramp because we want it to be a firm foundation, a solid foundation. That's exactly what Jesus did. He ripped up that foundation of sin and the fear and death and he replaced it with hope. And the promise of our salvation. He, on the cross, he replaced that foundation with love. Love from our Father in heaven. And the forgiveness for our sins. And he continues to do that for us. He continues to clear away all that junk and garbage in our life. When we come to him and we confess our sins before him. When we repent to him and he gives us freely of his grace. That forgiveness. He continues to wipe that away. And rebuild up our relationship with him. Because that is who he is. That is who our God is. He's not one who just sits back and who just waits. But he, even though Paul said that he was the skilled master builder, notice he said like the skilled master builder, he knew the skilled master builder was Jesus himself. The one who continues to build on our brokenness. Now when you think about that firm foundation 
And if you are familiar with the laying of concrete and the pouring of concrete, you know that it's not just simply cement and rocks coming together, but there's also what's called rebar. And rebar is short for reinforcing bars. That is steel rods and steel mesh that is laid down beforehand. And then the concrete is poured over the top of that. that con- those steel rods, those reinforcing bars are used to bond the concrete together to, to keep it from pulling apart and cracking and breaking to hold up to pressures. And that's the same way that the Spirit works in our lives. We're not just individual temples out there of the Holy Spirit floating around. We're not just popping up as individuals of faith, but we are the people of God together. We are one temple. In fact, as Paul used the language today, he didn't say that you, singular, are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but you all. Now, we don't, in, in English, we, we just have you, but if you look back to the Greek language, it would it's, it's, be as if we would say today, as our Texas friends say, you all, you all are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is all of us together. And, when, and so like the rebar binds the concrete together, so the Spirit works through each of our lives bound together to strengthen one another. As the rebar brings strength, so do we strengthen one another. We hold one another accountable. We hold one another accountable to our faith walk with God, to the example we're setting for our children, for our children's children. We worship together. Even if it's not always a hymn we like or even a reading that we care for, we worship together in the house of the Lord. We pray together. We get down before the Lord and lift up our, one another in prayer, but also praying for and with one another. We read scripture together and we study and we wrestle with it together. And we don't just do that on Sunday morning, but that is a day-to-day part of our lives. That is, an, is so important that that becomes a daily practice for us because it helps to replace, to stave off that broken, decaying, materials that Satan throws our way. And as you think about it, even then he still does attack, doesn't he? Like I was saying with the kids, he sometimes puts shiny, glittery things before us that look like good materials. Things that sound almost Christian. But that's how he works, isn't it? He works with things that sound almost like God's word and just like pyrite's almost like gold, it's not. And that's how the devil's usually, he, how he breaks up our relationships. We th- say things to one another that sound good, that sound like they should be faithful. But truly, they undermine and they hurt. And we have to be careful of those things. And that's why we need to be in the Word so often, so frequently. It's because then we will see through those lies that Satan tells. We will be able to see through those missed uh, half-truths that he pours before us. And we'll be able to see that firm foundation that Jesus is even now laying. What are you building with? What materials do you use to build in your own life? What materials do you use to build in your children's and your grandchildren's life? Are they materials that are going to hold up over time? Are they materials that are going to last more than just today and tomorrow? And as you think about that, I encourage you to go back to the cross, though. Go back to that firm foundation. Go back to that promise that Jesus gave us, that not only would he be our salvation, that he would pay the entire price for us, but he would continue to strengthen and sustain us, that he would continue to be with us each and every day. And he gives us just a beautiful gift right here in his body and blood in the Lord's Supper, a gift that is meant to sustain our faith throughout the week. Not the only gift, but a place to start our weeks from. So I pray that the Lord, that He would be your firm foundation, that He would be the foundation from which you build. Because as you build, keep in mind you're not building of your own, but we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the people of God. And the way that we build, it does affect not only those who are here today, but it affects those who are yet to come. The children who have not even been thought of yet, the the parents who are, are still children themselves, we're building not just for our future, but for theirs as well. So we lay that foundation starting with Jesus Christ and ending in his arms. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that despite our sinfulness, our brokenness, despite our seeking after materials that are awful, that you still enter into our hearts and our lives. 
You pro- provide us the forgiveness of sins, the washing away of our sinfulness. Lord, we pray that each day that we would seek to build with those good materials, the materials of your word, the materials of your prayer of prayer life with you and worship together. Lord, taking caring for one another and loving one another, living out our faith. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with us as we go forth, that not only would we care for our own lives, but that we would also build in the lives of our children, reinforcing the faith that was given them at Holy Baptism, reinforcing it each day that they might always know the promise that you have given them. Lord, we pray that we would have the hope, the hope that one day we'll be with you forever, not a hope of this world, an empty hope that will go away, but the true hope that one day as your sons and daughters we'll be with you in eternity. It is this hope in which we found our lives in which we pray. Amen.